today's video, I'm going to answer your questions. Any questions you have, this can be about investment, finance, anything coronavirus related, economy related, better understanding of owner's earnings and begin to use it yourself and evaluate companies yourself. How to think of probabilities, not certainties. And that's essentially what you have to do as, an, as investors. Today I'm going to show you everything about owner's earnings, how to calculate it, why it's so important, what goes into it, why it's one of Buffett's favorite metrics to use, how I use it to evaluate every single company. Look at okay, talking about specific value as value dusting concepts and techniques. We're going to talk about why you must read company financial reports um, and why you cannot just rely on the numbers. Hey, Jason here. Today's free training Friday video. I'm going to tell you what the largest drop in GDP or largest contraction of GDP in history really means. Before I get to that, though, I'll let you know you can get this uh, video as a podcast anywhere in the world for free on all major podcasting platforms, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Anchor, Spotify, and more. Uh, you can get this as a podcast anywhere in the world for free, and make sure you stick around to the end where I'll give you a link to grab one of our free guides to help you kind of through this process and this crisis we're dealing with as well. So, U.S., long-awaited release their updated gdp numbers and they were horrific um again like in many of these videos i've been doing recently i talked about a lot of this back in when this first when this coronavirus pandemic first started about what it was happening what could happen and what was frankly likely to happen if this if this pandemic lasted a while um, and obviously it's still here and it's actually accelerating at this point at, the, uh, at this recording in late July. So the U back in, I think when this first started people, some people rejected again, this is months out. So the projections were way off. I think I saw projections of like 15% to 50% contraction, contractions, contractions, sorry, in GDP, anywhere in that range would have been the largest contraction in US GDP history. Um, the largest on record GDP contraction was after World War II. And the estimates of GDP contraction of the largest on record in the US is 12.9% back in the Great Depression. We hit a second quarter analyzed GDP contraction of 33%. The previous record since stats have been being kept was back at uh, the year after World War II ended due to the demilitarization, um, the retooling of all the manufacturing facilities to get them back to manufacturing what they were manufacturing before they had to supply, um, frankly, supplies to the U.S. and allied efforts in World War II. The largest previous, and I think that was like a 9 or 10 percent, the largest previous contraction based on estimates was 12.9% in, I think it was 1932, back in the Great Depression. Only two times in U.S. history. Those are the records. We just, just destroyed that record. The previous record is 12.9%. We had a contraction rate, annualized contraction rate of 33%. That is absurd. Um, to put that into context, before this happened, our the U.S. GDP was estimated about twenty point five or twenty one trillion dollars. Since this crisis started or uh, began in March, we've wiped off an estimated three to four trillion dollars from U.S. GDP. That's like wiping an economy the size of India off the map economically. fifth largest economy in the world. That's like the fifth largest economy in the world going away. That's kind of abstract. So what does that mean to you? When GDP contracts, it means there's less economic activity going on. It means that there will likely be more business closures. It means that there will likely be more unemployment and or continued unemployment for the long term. This isn't going to go away 
anytime soon. <laughs> Even if we recover at a rapid rate of 18, let's say uh, 15% next quarter. Let's say the coronavirus just kind of magically goes away and everything goes back to normal and the economy improves by 15 percentage points. It would still be at a massive deficit to what we were previously at. And again, that leads to lower economic ratings. That leads to lower pretty much everything for all on an economic basis. For you, specifically, watch out for unemployment issues. Watch out for issues or watch out uh, for paying bills issues. We've talked about some of this in the past videos. Those will be linked below this for reference. But specifically, when GDP contracts, it's horrific for pretty much everybody. I can't think of a good reason that for GDP to contract. Um, I just, I can't. Because the more we produce, the more we get better, the more productive we get, the more stuff we do, generally the happier people are. And the more we produce, and it, again, it's a whole positive cycle. The same is true on the inverse side when things contract. Like I just said, lower GDP means lower economic output, which means lower demand, which means lower uh, business output, which means more business closures potentially, which means more un unemployment, which means more people paying or fewer people paying their bills, which leads to the issues uh, in the banks and the housing market that I talked about in previous videos. Again, those will be linked below this. This is... Again, back in March and April, I said this was, it was going to be bad. I didn't think it was going to be this bad. <laughs> I thought maybe 20, 25%. I didn't see a GDP contraction of 33%. That is, again, there's nothing even to put it in context with because it's the highest number by far in U.S. history. By far, it's not even close. What that means in kind of historical context is... Just based on GDP, we're dealing with the worst crisis we've ever seen in this country. Worse than the Great Depression. Worse than the um, demilitarization after World War II. Worse than the Great Recession. At least in terms of GDP contraction. What this also means is that GDP contracted by so much is that the recovery is not going to be fast. And again, I said this in March and April in some of the videos below that people were talking about the V-shaped recovery, which is essentially a quick fall and then a quick recovery back to the kind of same level. I thought those people were insane back then. I thought it made no sense that they were that they were talking about that because frankly, again, viruses just don't go away as we're seeing now. And so the eco economic impact wouldn't just be kind of like that. Logically, it just didn't make sense to me. What we're going to see now is it's not going to be a quick recovery. Again, I said this back in March and April. Now we have confirmation of that. But frankly, it's instead of lasting maybe a year or two, this could last a number of years. One estimate of that or one projection of that is that Boeing released their financials the other day and they said they don't expect airplane, I think it was airplane travel, to get back to pre-coronavirus levels for another three years, which pushes us into 2023. The Great Depression lasted for nine to 12 years, depending on how you kind of measure it. I don't think it's going to last that long, but I think this is going to be worse and kind of longer lasting economically than the Great Recession was, which lasted Again, two to four years, depending on kind of how you measure things. This economic contraction is so bad that I think it's going to forever pretty much transform how, maybe not my generation, I'm 33, and people who have lived in the kind of time before this, before this crash, but I think this economic, economic situation is so bad and it's probably again getting worse because the coronavirus cases are just exploding worldwide. You're seeing massive increases in US, uh, Brazil, India, South Africa, 
parts of Europe again. Australia, I think, is seeing a huge amount of cases. Japan seen it, uh, a rise in cases. Um, so I think this is going to have a similar effect on people, again, probably younger than me, maybe my kids' generation, in terms of how people view the stock market, the economy, stuff like that. I think this is going to be like the Great Depression, where it forever changes how a generation views the economy, the stock market, and stuff like that, and investing. Back in the Great Depression, an entire, essentially, generation swore off the stock market forever. Uh, swore off banks forever, and, and not I don't know how large it was, but to a certain degree, a lot of people wouldn't put their money in banks because they weren't safe, because they saw the bank runs in the 1920s and 30s, and they would put it literally underneath their bed. I think this is going to be a similar situation in terms of how how this is going to negatively affect how literally an entire generation of people view stocks, investing, the market, um, the economy. I think this is going to transform the world. That's how big of a deal this GDP contraction and the continued coronavirus issues we're dealing with, I think that's how big they are. The reason I think that is because, and again, I've said this in most of my recent videos and videos in the past, if we don't fix this soon and get back to somewhat normal, this is going to lead to economic devastation. And again, we saw that today. That is illustrated today. 33% contraction GDP is economic devastation. We've never seen in the United, history of the United States. Never. And unfortunately, because coronavirus cases are still exploding, again, in the U.S. and worldwide, this is likely to go on for a while. I saw, I think it was a, it was a quote from an economist today said, that said the coronavirus is the boss who's in charge. <laughs> that is 100% true. Will masks help? Will washing hands help? Yes. Will all that stuff help? Yes. In all likelihood, it will. But until the virus decides to go away or it mutates or we just kind of have to figure out how to live with it, until we kind of make a decision on what we're going to do going forward, we're not going to get back to any kind of normal, let alone the normal before this happened. Um, again, I don't know what the, what the answers are, but this, what we're seeing today, the news we saw today, is devastation. Economic devastation. And again, it's likely to continue getting worse in the short term. Another reason I know it's going to get worse in the short term is because data over the last two weeks, as coronavirus cases have kind of been exploding, is showing higher unemployment, more people on unemployment benefits, and those numbers are rising for the first time since May. When we thought we had the virus under control and we started lifting these lockdowns and stuff like that, we didn't have it under control. <laughs> we were just hiding from it, the virus. Um, now that we're people are out back out doing more stuff, um, it's summer, they want to get outside, they're tired of being locked in the house all the time, um, they're tired of not seeing their friends, people are doing more stuff, right or wrong, that's evolutionarily, that's how we're built, to be around other people. We're not built to be locked up in our houses for months on end. Um, evolutionarily, that's how we kind of survived as meeting in groups. So I understand that from that perspective. And it's, again, I just, people aren't just going to sit in their houses until this is over because when's it going to be over? Three months, we're past that. Six months, we're coming up on that rapidly. Most people don't know that the Spanish flu, 1918 Spanish flu, most people think it lasted just that one year because of the name of it. It lasted two full years until a virus kind of, mut kind of mutated and went away on its own. They never found a cure for it. And I'll talk about some of this stuff in another video that I've been putting off for a while. But this is not going to go away anytime soon. And the numbers today show that this is going to last for a long time. Probably, by my estimates right now, at least two years. In terms of the economic issues, I don't know, that also depends on how long coronavirus is around and what we kind of figure out with that. But I would I would say at least two years to get back to somewhat normal. 
at this case. That's based on historical, my, my study of historical um, kind of pandemics and crises, uh, what econo econo economics and academics and people are saying today and kind of based on my own research. I would say two, two years is probably a best case scenario. Do I think we'll ever be back to our normal from before this? I don't, frankly. I think this is, again, going to transform the world in multiple different ways. Socially, um, economically, all sorts of different ways. I think this is going to transform the world. Again, for better or for worse, it's whatever we make of it. But it's going to change it to a large degree. I'm certain of that. So that's what these numbers really mean. Because when you see... For example, my mom, I told my mom the numbers um, earlier today, and I was, she just kind of, I told her that U.S. Uh, GDP fell at 33% rate, and she was, okay, that's not, there's no context to it. She didn't know what it meant in terms of, like, the historical numbers and what it meant in a real-world sense in terms of job lost, um, how this is the worst ever on record, even worse than the Great Depression, by far what this leads to. So that's why I made this video, because, frankly, Again, all you see over the media is the, the GDP contraction at 32% rate and blah, 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 and that's the headlines. But they don't tell you in these articles or the videos what it really means in most cases. Economic devastation and all the other stuff I laid out, unemployment, business closures, um, issues with banks, and issues with the monetary system, issues all over the place. This is hugely Negative. Again, I can't think of a positive reason for this unless you literally want to re <laughs> unless you literally are one of those people who want to see the entire world kind of reworked. I don't there's not a silver lining in this, I don't think. It's going to help us for or force us to get better, which is a silver lining. Um, but in terms of like real world effects right now, there's not a positive to see in this, in my opinion. At least not that one that I can think of. If you can think of one, if I'm missing something, again, I don't want to hear the crazy stuff about reworking the entire political system, economic system. That's another kind of that's another kind of devastation. That's a story for a different day. But I'd love to hear your comments. Did I miss anything? Um, did I miss anything about how this is worse? How this is better? How does this make anything better? Let me know in the comments below. Um, I'd love to hear that. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, love, share, subscribe, comment, and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified every time we, re we release a new video. We release new videos all the time. If you listen on the podcast, like, love, share, subscribe, uh, comment, and leave a review. The more reviews, views, and listens we get on our various platforms, the more people we can help, so we greatly appreciate that. And if you want some tips on how to find great stocks, whether it's the coronavirus stuff we're dealing with today, or anytime. I've got a free guide that uh, is linked below those seven tips to picking great stocks. If you want to get a hold of that for free, you can do that. Again, link below is um, free. Below that, all I have to do is put it in your first name, email address, and you get that entire, I think it's almost 29, 30 page guide for free uh, to learn how to pick better stocks and to learn. I also talk about other things in that guide as well. One person who saw one, just one of the tips in there said this is worth more than its weight in gold. Um, so if you want to get that and continue learning, make sure to grab that for free and until next time, I'll talk to you again soon. Have a great day.